First up, Walden, Thorough, Emerson, New England has been rich in fertile ground and thinkers. At the decor of a sculpture park and museum, the contemplation continues with a look at how artists define utopia. New England is dotted with the clapboard shelters of thought. The old manse where Ralph Waldo Emerson sussed out spirituality in nature. Orchard House, where Louisa May Alcott's father Bronson treaded a transcendentalist path. And Fruitlands, Alcott's short-lived utopian commune. Throughout New England, particularly in Massachusetts, there were a number of agrarian settlements who lived communally and strive for a better working society on a small scale. It's the belief of Sarah Montross, curator of the exhibition Visionary New England at the Decor of a Sculpture Park and Museum, that those utopian notions linger here, taking root today via a host of contemporary artists. Sarah, this is gorgeous on the surface, but tell me what's happening here. So we are standing amid an installation of photography and a floor piece by the New Haven artist Kim Weston. Kim designed this array of incredible photographs activated by a memorial. You're looking at thousands of red silk tobacco bundles, and each of these signifies a life lost. So the memorial is to women and children of Native American descent who suffer much higher degrees of violence, disappearance, and death. Behind us are large-scale photographs printed on metal that Kim took at various powwows throughout New England that Kim and her family are a part of. The spirit energy of the ancestor or the deity who's inhabited by the performers is expressed through Kim's work. Here you'll find the traditional trappings of transcendentalism, like Henry David Thoreau's pencils, but also new sculpture by artist Sam Durant. It stems from 2016 when the California-based artist stationed himself in Concord at the Old Manse. Durant built the outline of a home reflecting those of Concord's first free black men and women. The installation became a meeting place for public conversation, and is resurrected here along with this sculpture of fused furniture, a desk representing 18th-century black poet Phyllis Wheatley, morphed with a recreation of Emerson's chair. Both of these pieces of furniture, that which these writers, these creators, these world builders would have sat and put pen to paper, are now being shown in dialogue and, in fact, supporting one another. In gallery upon gallery, artists in the exhibition interrogate utopian ideals. The vibrant paintings of the late artist Paul Lafley are like diagrams for transcendence. Montrose says, while artist Michael Medores envision a future world after climate change. Utopian thought emerges during particularly contested historic epochs, and so I do think right now. Amid COVID, amid different crises, we are seeing a regeneration of utopian energy. The artists who I was interested, who I found interesting in our collection, were invested in social progress. Sam Adams is the curator of the companion show Transcendental Modernism, which presents artists from the museum's collection who crafted their own 20th century take on the theme. Overall, I would have to say they're darker. You know, the show opens with exiles and emigres who are escaping Nazi Europe. The development of mysticism in their art is different, but it meets up with the same strands from transcendentalist thinkers from the 19th century. Adam says, for some of the artists, including poet Gary Rickson, the spirituality comes in the actual making. For him, painting this is a very charged experience where he's channeling these words that have come to him. For more than 200 years, America's thought leaders, writers, and artists have charted paths to utopia, but as this exhibition reminds us, none have made it there. What is utopia? Oh, it's such a great, great question. Hard to answer. I think utopia is a concept, a ideal that is never achieved.